everybody. It's Cats and Coffee. And I am so happy to be doing Cats and Coffee. It's been a heck of a two weeks and we have not been back here for two weeks. Ray, I've been missing you. <laughs> How are Hello, you? Cindy. I'm good. I hope we had coffee without me. You didn't wait for two weeks for this cup. I'm telling you, it was not fun coffee though. Look, I got my Scottish <laughs> wildcat from the eight. Agus uh, Field Center. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, so fun. Um, and everybody, I might be, well, I have a terrible storm going on outside. I'm in um, Prescott, Arizona, and uh, 6,000 feet up, and there is quite a thunderstorm. So if I'm pixelated or cut out, I'm going to throw a picture over my face, and Ray's going to do all the talking. Last weekend, we had the New Hampshire Indoor Scottish Festival. Mm. Up in Salem, New Hampshire, at the high school, that was that was pretty good. Uh, they had quite a good turnout because it is indoors and it's uh, pipe bands and, and everything. And it was they pretty much took over the whole building, classrooms for little um, for small solo competitions and other things that have to be. Hello, everyone, I'm with my friend Kelly Gilman, and she is. What clan are you with, Kelly? Buchanan. Clan Buchanan. This is all the Buchanan stuff. That cat is another right. Books about the yeah. names and the different the Templar iconography. The, the, the different the, people uh, the in our clan. Okay. Look at all the names over here. Can we go look at the list of people's all names? names that are part of the Why don't you go over there and there that one? These are all names of the Buchanan clan. And this, this is where we are. Can you point to that again? This is what Buchanan is. Uh -oh. Is the part of land. Most people is the part, um, the names, um, but ours is the 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 land that people lived on. And this is David, the old runner of our tent. Wow, he used to run your tent, is what you're telling me. Is that right? Yep. I see. Who's that guy in the big picture? It's your dad. Your dad, Dave. He told me about him too. He's a a man that ran the tent at, in New England for many years for Buchanan's. Well, I want to thank you for showing us everything, Kelly. Do you watch, do you watch the Touchdown channel sometimes, Kelly? Yes. All right, I hope you enjoy the Touchdown channel. I see you have a Clan Hatton button on there, so you're a, yep. you're a Clan Hatton honorary member for today. Yep. Although you're a Buchanan, you're good friends of mine, so... And that's a collateral thing. You get friends of the Wildcat, you get a button. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Kelly. You're welcome. All right, touch not everyone. And, and they have a big auditorium for the dancing and, and, and the band competition. So it was, it was a great time. About seven or eight clans, I think, and some yeah. other cultural demonstrations from vendors. It was great. The videos I have, and, and there'll be more to come too. Some I still have some I haven't put out yet.
good. Wonderful. Well, we will look for those. So everybody, make sure you're subscribed to at Ray McCat at the Touch Not channel for um, all of the things going on pretty much on the East Coast and up in Ray's neck of the wood covering East Coast of the United States. And Ray, thanks so much for doing that and for sharing everything that you do with us because it makes us feel like we're tagging along and seeing um, all of the fun things going on there. Sure. Thanks. So one, one thing I want to mention, on the same day yesterday in Milford, Mass., they had tryouts and qualifications for the No Fame Games that are coming up there in June on June the 15th. So they had a event there which was a, an open registration tryouts i think they call it which just means you can show up and do it uh, so that went fairly well they had a little bit of a rainy morning i think which we did in new hampshire too but i think they had a good afternoon there so that was that was good for them and that event is coming up pretty quick so that was the tryouts that was like the pre-qual for that for the events for that for the athletics for the no fame games and then on june 29th they'll be at charlestown new hampshire as well at the old fort number four it's also a no fame games uh, event as well as the as the uh, saint andrews society of maine is running that event which is a full-blown scottish festival with bands and bands and clans and athletics and and you name it should be a great time oh i can't wait to see it and i'm i'm so excited because we've officially launched the season for the highland games I've got two coming up the month of May, which is Davidson month, but I've got Victoria, Canada, um, second weekend of May. And then I've got wow. um, the Costa Mesa Highland Games in Costa Mesa, California, second largest, um, I believe, on the West Coast Highland Games with um, band competition, um, the Scottish Athletics, and we have Clan Row. We have about um, 84 representations of Clan Tents, so that'll be really nice to walk around and talk to people. I did record Las Vegas, folks. It was really small this year and very, very windy. We had about 30 mile an hour winds. It was really tough. There were three tents wow. that blew off the field. That's and dangerous. It's dangerous, and we couldn't... Um, the filming is is very shoddy, so I think what I'm going to have to do is overlay it with some music. You're not going to hear a heck of a lot of talking just because you couldn't. I didn't. I even got out my microphone with the little fuzzy, and it still was just really tough. It was so windy, and they oh. had they canceled the Highland dancing competition. I mean, it was just. <laughs> it it was it was tough. We were we were like burned from the wind. Not sunburned, but wind burnt. I feel like I want to talk real quickly, um, if it's okay with you, Ray, before we do some McLean, which is the, all kinds of fun. But just about the Clanhattan Connection Project, your yes. Clanhattan Connection. Don't forget, everybody, you need to send us a little video of yourself. Now, again, if you are not comfortable recording yourself, there's a few ways you can do this. Um, you can send us an email. We can Zoom like this with you. Ray can do that. I can do that. Uh, we can do a little chat and talk about your family and get some photos sure. of yourselves. I mean, if you feel terribly uncomfortable. Otherwise, you know, try not to be uncomfortable. Ray and I don't like seeing ourselves on here. We really do. I mean, I, I don't know if I could speak for you, Ray. I don't. I see myself on here and I'm like, oh, no, I wish somebody else can do it. Hopefully one day somebody else will take some of it over. But at any rate, um, not everybody's comfortable seeing themselves on video. We understand that. But everybody wants to see you. Everybody wants to know where you're from. Everybody wants to know a little bit about your family. What's your family story? Uh, Ray was mentioning, do you have some favorite recipes? Um, it's uh, send us your photos. If you just want to write it all down and email it over and send some photos, we'll read it aloud for you and make sure it's included in our collage of people of the Clanhattan Association from around the world. So send that over to the Clanhattan Association at yahoo.com. Of course, I'll put it above so you can see where to send it. Ray, do you want to add anything to that? Because I know um, you had some great ideas. Well, sure. I mean, I, I mentioned, uh, well, baby pictures. I think I mentioned a lot of people put oh. their cartons on the baby with <laughs> <laughs> for baby pictures i'm sure there's a lot of those out there that haven't been shared with everybody if, if uh i'm sure that uh i'm sure someone can find those that's that's one thing i would think of 
uh, you know, do you do you have a something you share at the holidays, a special meal, or something you wear, or I don't know, a song or something that that you, that that says to you that's our clan, that something you're passing along has been passed along to you. That's the kind of thing we want to hear about, or, or something you think of on your own as well. Um, it, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be old, right? We're 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 alive and we're now, and we're clansmen and, and clanswomen now. So what what are you doing now? That's fine too. Whatever your connection, feeling like you're part of us, what is that? Yes, yes. And it's, um, you know, if you've got a photograph of something from the past, an event you've attended, if, um, you know, I think you were, when you were five, you did Highland dancing, but now, you know, that would kill you because you're older like me and you, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, just send us everything and give us a little story about what you know about your connection. If you know your um, genealogy, by all means, share that, um, how your family came over, where you ended up in the world. Um, I forget how Richard McBain kind of says it, but he He's like, uh, we were all shot out of cannons, as it were, out of Scotland. Our ancestors in the past were all shot out of a cannon. We landed somewhere in the world. So we want to know where you landed. <laughs> That's good. Who you are, where you landed, <laughs> and a little bit about your family. That would be fantastic. And I was able to get um, Alan McLean of Doc Garrick, or Doc Garrick. <laughs> Okay, you're getting better. Did he give you another lesson on how to say that? Yes, you'll see it on there. But um, he's been very busy and traveling. Um, it was his wife Anne had a, a big birthday. And so they've been with family doing a lot of different things. And they have a new grandchild. But um, very lovely people. But you'll see, um, I put it out if you want to watch it, if you're interested in some McLean history. I learned a lot of things I didn't know, but there are some funny things in that interview. Oh my gosh, Ray. So one of his ancestors um, in the um, Doc Garrick Drum Nadraka area near, near Urquhart Castle actually sued someone over a stolen unicorn in the, court, in the courts in Inverness and won. <laughs> is it a prize stud unicorn they were breeding it or what was it we we don't know it doesn't make mention of if this was an actual animal or right. if it was a statue i assumed it might be a statue perhaps you're right but then alan was talking about you know walking through that particular field um near his you know his family's property and thinking about there might be a unicorn prancing around somewhere in a field out there <laughs> that's good it's it's quite fun and he's he also during covid he talks about during covid he did some research of some family history and he found another roderick mclean not the poet which i know you're going to talk to us a little bit about uh roderick mclean the poet but there was another roderick and this roderick um passed away an institute for the criminally insane down in london okay during during Victorian times, and he's like, oh my goodness, um, I wonder what he's in here for. Come to find out he was the eighth and final person that tried to assassinate Queen Victoria. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I read about him just the other day, right? I did see that just the other day. I didn't know that. I didn't remember the first name, though. Huh. There's there's one other thing in there I'm not going to tell you too much about because I want everybody to go over and if they can, you know, watch that with Alan. It's quite entertaining and it, it is very informative. It talks a lot about the McLeans and how they came into existence with Clan Hatton. You know, they were the vanguards for the McDonald's of the Isle and um, they were sent over from Mull by the McDonald of the Isle to be basically the vanguard of the constable of Urquhart Castle okay. in the 15th century. And when the McDonald's of the Isles lost their power in that area, the Maclean's of the North were kind of left on their own. And so they banded together with Clan Hatton, who was in the area at the time for protection. Um, and they, they had... They fought with the Grant family. They lost Urquhart Castle to the Grants in 1509. Anyway, long story in history there. Alan talks a little bit about that. And then there's another fun story about Napoleon. 
and a ship that was bound for the United States with the clock that Napoleon had made for Thomas Jefferson. And it was intercepted by Alan McLean's ancestor. And okay. he might very well be still in possession of that clock, which the U.S. government has been on to him about getting it back. Right. <laughs> There's a story about this, and he's going to come back on with us at some point and delve more into that story. His ancestor, who was the, the chieftain of the McLeans and the McLeans of the North, had a dream one night and the next day he went out and intercepted this ship about where it would be. It's a crazy yeah. dream. And sure enough, it was there. Is that right? He kept, he kept this clock as a souvenir. Yeah. So I'm just having fun learning more about the McLean's. Ray, I know you've been looking at some stuff. Is there anything you're wanting to share with us that yeah, sure. We can talk about uh, the other Roderick that you mentioned, perhaps. Can we do that? Yes, please. Anything you want to talk about at all? Yeah, so um, it's actually about the same time, I think. Well, no, actually, it would be, um, you were saying the 15th century. This is about well, 1500, so just, just into the 16th. But Roderick McLean, born about 1500 near Loch Ness, they think, he, he was what's what was called a humanist writer and poet. And I'm sure that um, the Reverend talked about his long line of, of, of churchmen in his family. This man as well was a, he became uh, the magistrate in Iona. Two of his female relatives were prioresses in Iona as well. And yes, he's a very famous poet, uh, famous McLean poet, I should say. Uh, he he did a good job blending Gaelic with Latin, apparently in a classicized way. And his, he he was very very good at uh, poetic meter, which I don't know much about. But I think uh, is it pentameter is the word that comes into it. I remember that one from school. A iambic pentameter, how the how the, how the poem flows. He was very good at that. Um, and he did a lot of translation into uh, from Gaelic and Latin of. Saint Adamon's writing about Saint Columba, the life of Saint Columba. I don't know if you've ever seen that. No, I um, have not. I I I will um, post a link so he, people want to see that. I'm intrigued to watch that now. He blended Gaelic and Latin in such a way. This is what he's known for, at any rate. And then he was at an, an abbot in Iona. And very early on, he was he was uh, educated in the church. He, he died at only 53 years old, but he's quite well known as a humanist, and he was very practically tried to live the life of Columba, who was practically, it seems like he must have been his hero. He spent a lot of his time uh, delving into the life of St. Columba, which Adamant had had very well um, had very well documented. The life of St. Columba is a famous one that, um, that the hagiographer or hagiographer, whichever you want to say, uh, St. Adamant did. Uh, many of those lives. There is a long line of church people from the McLeans, and and we didn't really uh, talk too much about that, but we did talk about the prioresses and um, Roger McLean, and it was before the Reformation that was brought about by King Henry VIII, and okay. so um, in the in the sixteenth um, century, you remember King Henry VIII wanted to marry Anne Boleyn. And um, so he had to basically, I don't know if renounce or denounce the Catholic Church to be able to do sure that. Yes. <laughs> and so, um, but before that time, everybody was Catholic. And so these people were Catholic um, out on Iona. And there's a big cross out there. Um, that's the McLean Cross on Iona. And and this is a part of the McLean, again, um, history that I, I never knew about until just this past week, studying more about the McLeans. And then uh, they talk about Castle Spiritol or Spiritin, yeah. and it was um, where Doc Garrick is, um, but it's the, it's the principal lock on the Caledonian Canal, um, is where Doc Garrick actually is. And they removed the castle when they implemented the canal. Um, right. 
but we had a couple of old drawings of that castle and it was um, very well known to be the McLean Castle. And um, so very interesting. And, and there was some, Alan alludes to a murderous bloodbath at that castle between the McLeans and the Camerons. I know that's Cameron, yes. shocking for everyone. <laughs> the McLeans came in on the scene, Alan was saying back in the 13th century, but then were sent by um, from out of Mole, which is where the main um, McLean clan lineage is from. Sure, do it, right? Yes, out into the north um, because the McLeans were the vanguards um, to the Lord of the Isle. And so they were sent into the north for that reason. And as Alan put it, I like how he put it. All McLeans of the north are McLeans from Clan McLean, but not all of the Clan McLeans can say that they are the McLeans of the north. Sure. And oh, great. Then their son, Hector, we showed... Um, we showed on our earlier Cats and Coffee, he just got married um, last year. And um, he's got a whiskey shop in Edinburgh, uh, near Edinburgh Castle on Jeffrey Street. And um, I do have some footage of that. I need to pull out and stick up for everybody to see. He sells whiskey and cigars. And you can <laughs> go there for a whiskey tasting. It's very close to the castle, so you can pop right over and and say hello to Hector McLean of Doc Garrick. <laughs> Indeed. Didn't I? Yeah. So everybody hop on over there and watch that interview. It was it was really fun. Um, and you can find what Doc Garrick means and what it has to do with oatmeal. There's a teaser for you folks. I love our wide range and variety between the two channels. I just also did an interview with Dr. Simon Gilmore from the Society of Antiquaries and talking about their work with preservation and history. And um, yeah. they have done some online lectures. So I feel like everyone should check them out. If you've got some spare time and you really want to, I've worked with Dr. Simon Gilmore for a few years now when I did some work with the Scottish government, um, which I have not, I don't really do that work anymore, but got to know him over the, I want to say the past 10 years or so, and he's been the director over there and they do a really good work for Scotland, helping to preserve artifacts and history and um, seeking things out. And, and actually the, the Society of Antiquaries was the one who um, first started and opened um, the National Museum there in Edinburgh. And they are right now based there. So if you're in Scotland, Go to the museum. <laughs> Great, very important work. Yeah, if you can't get there, um, go and I'll post a, a link. But if you are interested in learning more about history and history, especially having to do with the Clan Hatton and its associated clans, there are some good um, talks. They use Zoom, so you can Zoom in. You don't have to be there in person if you're interested and you can keep track of their calendar. So other good resources and people to know for history. Thanks. I made a little short of us talking uh, a few weeks back about the same thing about your two cups of coffee. Everyone likes that thing. Oh, I like how you did that. That's really cool. I need to make more shorts. I've fallen down on that. I've I've been working too much. Differences in our channel are there, but but I think they're good. More of the tapas plate and you're the full course meal, I think that's what it is. As I said, I hope everyone's tuning into both channels. You're going to get fun informative things from both channels and it's going to be different a little bit different and you're going to see what ray's doing on the east coast and up in the north there so on the touch line i'm going to have a a fellow who's been over there i think he was just there uh one month ago perhaps it was two weeks maybe three weeks he'd be there by, by himself on a nice trip and uh, so he's going to share some of his videos and, and talk with me uh, on an interview about that coming up and uh then i have another interview i'm going to be doing with a person who does some of the tenting and the convening at the games the convening folks that's that means the person that's at, at the tent at a festival it's the host of the tent perhaps you could say they're called counselors in some clans but largely we call them conveners at clan hatton and um, that's the person who greets you the person who has those tables and chairs and brought them there in their car and sets that all up and so 
I'm going to talk to a Davidson that does that. And uh, that's something I want to focus on a little bit and what it takes to do that in case anyone's interested. We would appreciate the help. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a small labor, labor of love, I would say. Um, but there are so many games around the continental United States. I think last count was what 124 or something like that. And there's no way we can cover all of them. You know, we can have a conversation about that and see if it's a good fit for you. And um, and also it's just, um, it, it's fun to connect with people and, and with some of the other Clanhattan clans. Uh, so we actually have a couple of people who are convening for some of the other Clanhattan clans who are going yes. to put up a banner for the Clan Hatton Association. So that's wonderful as well. So how it happens and it's how it's how it happened with me and kind of had a little Clan Hatton side of the tent or corner at first and that kind of thing. I sort of branched out on my own uh, from Clan Macintosh doing, but I do the Clan Hatton, broader Clan Hatton. And thank you so much for doing that, Ray. We're greatly appreciative. I guess we should say goodbye for now and we will see you next time. And thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. And hopefully everyone's having, having a wonderful week. And look over the schedule um, that we have posted in the description and see if there's one of the events that you can attend and would like to attend and make some arrangements. And, and don't forget, for anybody who wants to go over to Scotland for the AGM, Thursday, August 1st. <laughs> in Inverness at the Kings Mills House Hotel. And um, we are actually going to broadcast live from there and also record it. So, you know, it's uh, we tried last year to broadcast live and you never know what you're going to get in terms of connectivity, Wi-Fi. <laughs> but we will be recording it as well, just to be sure and on the safe side. So hopefully if you can join us in person, you will be able to join us um, here and and watch the festivities of the AGM. And then we have Moy, the what used to be the Highland Field Sports, which is now the, the country fair, but it's all the same. And then the McPherson's have their Highland Games uh, on that Saturday, which will wow, be busy. the third. So there's a lot of things going on. The McBain's um, gather over at their memorial land on the banks of Loch Ness. So we'll run over there and have a little walk through that. That's quite a wonderful experience as well. And um, any of the other clans of Clan Hatton that are doing anything in and around there, we'll try to get that covered for you. Hopefully we'll see sure. everyone back here very yep. soon. Everyone, Bye. Not if you want. Touch not. Bye Kelly's for now. Yes. I think they're, they're good. She's a member of the Touch Not uh, channel. And she's here at the Scottish Indoor <laughs> Scottish Festival at Salem High School in Salem, New Hampshire. The television interview going on down the hall, so we're waiting. And while she's waiting, Callie is watching Cats and Coffee on the Touch Not channel. She's one of you, my friends. Touch Not. <laughs>